Stacks in Aperture help you compare and manage groups of similar shots or of images shot in a rapid sequence, so you can quickly find the very best shot. Aperture automatically makes stacks to keep multiple versions of the same image linked together. To create your own stack, select some images and choose Stack from the Stacks menu. When stacked, images are grouped together in a strip with a dark gray border. The first image in a stack is considered the pick image. In the upper left corner of the pick image is a number showing how many images are in the stack. Click on it to open or close the stack. When the stack is closed, you see only your pick image. You can rearrange the images in an open stack by dragging and dropping them in any order. To make a new image of the pick, choose Stacks Pick. You can also split the stack in two using the Split Stack command. This makes two separate stacks, each with its own pick. When you close all stacks, each sequence is reduced to a single thumbnail that can be opened or closed to reveal all of the related shots. You can also have Aperture Auto Stack to create stacks based on time. Just select the images that you want to auto stack, and then choose Stacks Auto Stack to open the auto stacking HUD. The slider represents time in seconds. As you move it to the right, it expands the time for related images. This is really helpful when you shoot in burst mode, for example. With the Stacks feature in Aperture, keeping related shots organized and finding the best ones is easier than ever. With Aperture 3, you can now browse your library, edit photos, and move between projects without ever leaving full screen, giving you an uncluttered, distraction-free view of your work at all times. To navigate your library in full screen, click the Full Screen button on the toolbar, or just press the F key. You can change the sort order of your projects with the pop-up menu at the top of the screen. You can also group your projects by year or by folder to make it easier to find them. If you want to look at one specific group of projects, just click the header. Then double-click a project tile to open it. Change the size of the thumbnails, hide or show metadata and overlays like color labels and ratings, search your photos, and drag thumbnails around to sort them. When you double-click a photo, the full-screen browser is replaced with the image, but you still have access to the inspector to add adjustments and effects to your photos. Hold down the Shift key while moving a slider to hide the inspector and maximize the view of your photo. To go back to the browser, just double-click the image again. At the top of the screen is the Library Path Navigator. This lets you jump from the current project or album to any other one in your library. Just click on any of the headers for drop-down menus that let you navigate your entire library so you can move from project to project without ever leaving the full screen view. Click the Projects button in the upper left corner to return to the Projects view. Press the F key at any time to drop out of full screen and back into the standard Aperture interface. Full screen support in Aperture 3 lets you take advantage of every pixel in your Mac's display when you're browsing projects, thumbnails, and individual images. You can use photos from your Aperture library and other applications using the Mac OS X Media Browser. For example, if you want to add a photo to an email message in Mac OS X Mail, Click the Photo Browser button. In this window, you have access to both your iPhoto library and your Aperture library. You can navigate to any project, album, or folder, and then drag the photos you want directly into your email. The photos added to your email are JPEG previews generated by Aperture using the settings that you've selected. You can adjust the image size even further with the pop-up menu at the bottom of the email window. In Snow Leopard, you can access your photos from the standard open window in most applications. If you want to add an image from your Aperture library to a Microsoft Word document, choose Insert, Picture, From File. Then, in the open window, click on Photos and you'll see the same media browser as before. Choose your Aperture library and navigate to your desired project. Select the picture you want and click Insert.
Some applications, like iLife and iWork, provide access to the media browser with a single click. Just select the photo you want and drag it into your document. Thanks to its tight integration with the Mac OS X media browser, it's easy to use your Aperture images with any other application. When you connect two displays to your Mac, Aperture automatically detects the second monitor and offers a number of additional options in the Viewer Mode menu. In Mirror Mode, Aperture displays the same images on the second monitor that are in the main viewer, but without the Aperture interface. So you can use the second monitor to show your images to a client while you work in the normal Aperture interface. In Alternate Mode, the primary select image is displayed full screen on the second monitor, even when several images are selected and showing in the viewer. This way, you can preview a group of images on your screen while displaying each full screen image alone on the second display. Span Mode splits the contents of the main viewer between two monitors. So if you've selected eight images, four of them appear on the primary monitor and the other four on the secondary monitor. If you switch to full screen mode, all eight images will display the same size in both monitors. In blank mode, the second monitor is simply left blank. This can be useful before starting your presentation for a client. In desktop mode, your primary monitor will have the aperture interface and your second display will show an empty Mac desktop. You can also browse, preview, or edit images with your thumbnails on one screen and your full-size images on another. Just switch from split view to browser in the toolbar. You can view your images in standard view or in full screen. When viewing in full screen, you can access the viewer mode right in the toolbar. Or use the swap displays command to quickly swap what's showing on the two displays. Whether you're reviewing your images with clients, designing books and web pages, or simply reviewing and editing images, Aperture's multiple display support can make the job easier. Welcome to Aperture 3. This short video will show you the basics and help you get up and running. To get started, import some photos into your Aperture library. Click the Import button and then choose your photos from a camera, memory card, or hard disk. Aperture automatically organizes photos into projects, which you can name and organize using the Library Inspector on the left. Near the top of the inspector, you'll find a number of different ways to view and organize your entire photo library. Click Projects, and you can view your projects just like events in iPhoto. Just double-click a project tile to view the photos in that project. Faces lets you organize your photos by the people who are in them. To get started, just click Show Unnamed Faces. Aperture shows you some of the faces it's already detected in your photos. Just type in a name and hit Return to add that person to the face's corkboard. Or you can select any photo of a person and click the Name button to add his or her name. On the corkboard, Double-click a snapshot to see other photos that Aperture thinks may include that person. Then click Confirm to either accept or reject Aperture's suggestions. Places is another new feature that uses GPS data to map your photos based on where they were taken. Click the Places icon to view the interactive map. To add locations to photos that don't include GPS data, just drop them onto the map. In addition to your projects, places, and faces, the Library Inspector also shows you books, slideshows, and other things that you've created inside of Aperture. The Inspector at the left has two additional tabs. When you click on the Metadata tab, the Inspector will show you information about the currently selected photo. And when you click on the Adjustments tab, you'll be able to access Aperture's powerful photo editing tools. Here you can use adjustment presets to apply ready-to-use effects to your photos. For completely custom effects, enhancements, or retouching work, you can use any of the tools in the Adjustments Inspector, and add even more tools using the Adjustments pop-up menu. Aperture provides a number of different ways to view your photos as you work on them. Use the buttons on the right side of the toolbar to switch from view to view. 
Click the Browser button to see your photos as a thumbnail grid, or Viewer to see a larger version of each picture. Choose the Split View to see the thumbnail browser and the viewer at the same time. Click the Full Screen button to view your selected photos in a full screen view. Just double click to switch between the full screen viewer and the full screen thumbnail browser. And when you're in full screen mode, you still have access to all of the tools you need to work with your photos. Aperture makes it easy to share and showcase your photos in print and on the web. Use the buttons on the toolbar to publish your selected photos directly to your mobile me, Facebook, or Flickr account. You'll also see a pop-up menu called New in the toolbar. Here you'll find all the tools you need to turn your photos into a themed slideshow or into a professionally printed and bound photo book. To learn how to use any of these tools and do even more with Aperture, check out the video tutorials at apple.com or search the Help menu. Because many digital SLRs now shoot video, Aperture 3 allows you to import, organize, and view HD video and audio clips along with your photos. When importing, they'll appear in the import window just like your photos do. Video clips are marked with a special video badge, and audio clips have a speaker icon. Double-click the clips to preview them right in the import window. Double-click again to return to the Import Browser. Once you've imported videos, you can play them back in the viewer. Playback controls appear when you move your mouse over the viewer. You can also play your clips in full screen mode. In the Metadata panel, you'll see the duration, size, and frame rate for the video clip. And you can add metadata exactly the same way as you would for photos. Use the Action menu to set a poster frame for each clip. To edit the length of the clip, choose Trim from the Action menu. Then drag either end of the yellow selection frame to set the start and end frames. When you have the clip set to the length you want, click Trim. You can also turn a single frame from a video clip into a new JPEG image. Just choose New JPEG from Frame from the Action menu. A new JPEG appears in your Aperture library, and you can enhance and adjust it using Aperture's standard adjustment tools. You can use your video and audio clips in an Aperture slideshow. Just drag and drop the video where you want it to play. Audio clips can be dragged into a slideshow as part of a multi-layered soundtrack. A lot of people are surprised at how I act on the tennis court as opposed to off the tennis court. Uh, off the tennis court, I'm a pretty mild person. Aperture's robust multimedia support lets you enhance your projects with any combination of video, audio, and still images. 